B, and welcome to the Circle of Hecker. So spells, part two. A spell or a ritual is used to entertain the conscious mind and to program the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind works in symbols and emotions and the use of the five senses to collect information. So sight, sound, touch, taste and smell. So a good spell should contain all of the five senses to properly program the subconscious mind with the desired intention. So let's look at music. Music is great. Music speaks to and fires both the analytical and the creative sides of the brain. Music can evoke intense emotion, which is great for spell work and important for programming the mind. Have you ever been to one of those seminars that do motivational techniques? The ones that uh, are to do with, say, um, becoming a millionaire. The motivational speaker is speaking with emotion. And there may be even some music playing in the background. You may not be totally aware of it, but usually there is. The speaker becomes more animated, saying something that at the time seems quite profound and, and quite, uh, quite emotional and moving. Uh, the music heightens as the speaker begins to get more emotional with the speaking. They start to talk about how they are going to free you from the weight that is holding you down and stopping you from achieving your goals and of you becoming a millionaire. Just all you need to do is just book in to buy some tapes, buy the book, sign up to their next $2,000 seminar where they will go into the secrets that they can't tell you at this very time of the seminar. And before you know it, you have signed up to uh, three, four grand later um, to a seminar, some books, and um, the only thing that is lighter is your bank account, and the only millionaire in the room is the person who sold you the books and the tapes. Now this is called Neuro Linguistic Programming or NLP. It is used by salesmen, among others, to program your subconscious so that you will, in this case, buy what they are selling. We will go into NLP in another video, but when it comes to music and to words that are being spoken, you need to become aware of the fact that they work on a subconscious level. So music is the same, songs are the same. The songs that you listen to that are repeated over and over and over again program your subconscious mind. The words are sung or spoken in rhyme, much like a spell. The music invokes and evokes an emotion and that emotion and the words coupled together trigger images and symbols and that programs the mind. Not only that, but the repetition of the song, especially if it's a, um, what is it, a top 40 song, it's repeated over and over and over again. You're very lucky if you don't hear the same song at least twice, maybe three times in an hour while you're listening to the radio. Ever had a song in your head that you just can't, can't get out? You're repeating over and over and over again in your head, programming your subconscious mind. So when it comes to spell work, music works well. It helps to heighten your emotion and it helps to impress an idea into your subconscious mind. So if it is a spell for love, having some kind of love song that has words that invoke that, that emotion, that feeling that you want to have playing in the background, you repeat those words over and over, will help to impress uh, your subconscious mind. Following this, spells written in rhyme also impress on the subconscious mind. Think of it as your mind focuses on things that you don't do repeatedly. We do not all speak in rhyme, well at least I don't, on a daily basis. So when you 
hear something, when your subconscious hears something that is out of the norm, as in something that is spoken in rhyme, something that's easy, impressed on your subconscious mind, your subconscious mind goes, hey, I better have a look at this. I better focus on this a little bit more because it is out of the ordinary. Your subconscious mind brings in all this information all the time, but it is something that is a little out of the ordinary, then it'll file that away in a, in a special little place. So your subconscious mind is going to be sparked by this difference and know that it is out of the ordinary. This is the same as when you wear uh, special robes when you're doing uh, ritual work or, or, um, or spells, or if you're sky clad. This sets up a command in your subconscious to go, this is special, I need to take notice of this. So it also gives your conscious mind something to focus on. Because what we're trying to do here is to let your subconscious mind do all the work while your conscious mind looks at all the, the pretty colours. So we have a candle to focus on. We have words. We have herbs that are used. What are the herbs being used for? Creating a sigil. Whatever the mechanics of the spell is, it is about entertaining the conscious mind. It's kind of like a kid in a lolly shop will have this wildly sparkled eyes looking at each little thing going, ooh, pretty, the candle, oh, pretty, oh, the herbs, oh, okay, nice, that goes there, that goes there. So your, your conscious mind is being, is being entertained, it's being, um, it's being pushed to the side. It's almost like, again, giving a child uh, a lolly to shut them up while the, the grown-ups do the, the, the proper work. Um, so it is using all of these little things to um, help your subconscious mind trigger cues, but it's also used to help to get your conscious mind out of the way for a little while. So that's where correspondences are used. Each herb, each, um, each candle color has an energy and vibrates on an atomic level and cues in your subconscious. And that helps to tune in your body also, so that you start to vibrate and bring about the manifestation with the same energies of your spell. In order to do this more effectively, a deliberate, conscious way, we need a focused will. This requires continual repetition, learning how to focus so that you can almost bore a hole in a wall. You are that focused. What this means is that in the beginning of your spell work, you will have what is known as beginner's luck. This is because it is new and it's fun and you're relaxed and you can easily forget about what your working is and not dwell on it because subconsciously it is just a little bit of fun. Then you have some success, and then doubt creeps in, and you wanting to do more and more and repeat your success. But now you have performance anxiety, and you can't focus, because now this is real, and I don't know what to do, and um, oh, my right foot's now asleep, and oh, is that a dog barking, and um, oh, did I leave the stove on, and all of these things start to creep into your head. A focused will, able to focus on one thing with no distractions, be totally in the moment where there is no time. That is where you need to be. And that takes practice to achieve. It takes time and it takes practice. And unfortunately, many don't want to take the time and do the practice. There is no magic spell to recite that will give you magic powers like in the movies. But if you want to become close and do some really cool stuff, you need to practice. Now I spoke about in the last video the path of least resistance and the realm of possibility. So magic can be described a little bit like electricity. 
as in it will travel in the quickest and easiest route to ground. Magic is the same. Let's use the example of you do a spell because you need say $10,000. Now the energy is going to go the quickest and easiest route. Also couple this with your realm of possibility. So the outcome may not be what you expected. Hopefully it is better but there are always stories of someone doing a spell and either one they are in a car accident and hurt themselves and the settlement is $10,000 which is great but it's the exact same amount that their medical bills came to. Or to a, a family member dies and leaves you $10,000. Both are not ideal. But you need to think, what do I believe is the only practical way I could get this amount of money? Your realm of possibility. And two, was I precise with my words? This is why many witches will say words to the effect of may this or something better manifest and may it be for the good of all harming none. If you believe the only way you can get the money is if someone dies or if you hurt yourself then that is how it will happen. If you don't believe you are worth receiving that amount then you won't. Maybe you um, will sell something uh, you don't need and it will add up to the amount. Or maybe you will earn extra money in your job and it comes to the amount. You receive a gift. Whatever it is, if you believe you are worthy of receiving that amount, then you will. But it will happen in a mundane way. As I said in my last video, Glitter won't fall from the sky, there won't be a lightning flash and suddenly $10,000 just flutters down in front of you. It doesn't work that way, especially if your realm of possibility does not cater for that. But what I find is easier is if you don't focus on the money itself, but rather on what you want to use the money for, what you, are, what you want to buy, what you want to do with it. Instead of thinking about an arbitrary number, that you have no real emotional investment, no emotional link to, think about what it is. So if it is a bill that you need to have paid, then you do a spell to have the bill paid. If you want a car, don't do a spell for the money for the car, do a spell for the car. If it's a holiday, do a spell for the holiday. These things will allow you to have more of an emotional investment. You are able to visualize more. You are able to focus. And uh, rather than trying to focus on money, this intangible, arbitrary figure, think about the end result rather than one of the means to achieve the result. I hope that helped. I'm Lady Amaris. Merry meet. Merry part and merry meet again. Blessed be.